Good evening. All right. Good. Are y'all, is y'all awake out there? Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you tonight. Amen. All right. All right. There you go. Right there. We want to welcome you tonight to be here to hopefully open up your minds and your heart and just be revived. Sometimes we have to do that. We have to get closer, open up our minds, and just get closer to the Lord. Let the Lord come closer to us. They'll help us to get back and focus where we need to be able to focus, to do the things that we need to do for the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm Deacon Hill. This is Brother Larry Sherrod and Brother Young, Derek Young. And we're going to bring it in today for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Good evening, church. Good evening. If I could get everyone to stand, please, for the reading of the Lord's word. And we're going to go to Psalms 100. One everyone knows. <laughs> and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is he is God. It is he that has made us and not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth, is, and his truth endureth all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Got to echo, Pastor. It's just exciting to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah, during the week, going through whatever we're going through, but coming to get revived. Yeah. Just remember growing up, Deacon is young, how they used to tell us, hallelujah, right? Thy be the glory. Yeah, hallelujah, oh, man. Hallelujah, God be the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah, revive us again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Again, I'm Brother Young, just excited. Want to take some time to, to bring our minds in and to think about why we're here, yeah. right? Let's spend some time and just get, a, get close to God. Hallelujah. Get revived. So as we go to the throne of grace, please bow your heads, close your eyes, but bring it in and it's take some time to let's focus and, and thank God uh, for, for being revived. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you're an awesome God. Yeah. You're a ruler, you're a mighty king, you're a deliverer, you're, you're everything to us, Lord Jesus, yeah. Yeah, when we're sad, you comfort us. When, we're, when we need you, you're there, Lord. You are everything, everything to us, Lord Jesus. So before anything, we just come to say thank you, Lord. We come to you bowing before you, Lord, humble as we know how, saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being able to move our hands, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being able to move our feet. Thank you for being able to go to work, Lord Jesus. Yeah. It's only through your grace, your mercy, Lord Jesus, that that exists. And so we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for being such an awesome God, a loving God, Lord Jesus. You blessed us this entire week, Lord Jesus, and we come to you just saying thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. And we ask you, Lord, just to forgive us for our sins, Lord Jesus. Yeah, we're filthy rags, Lord Jesus. Our thoughts, our actions, our behavior, we come to you asking for forgiveness, Lord Jesus. You tell us in your word, Lord Jesus, that if we turn from our wicked ways and we seek you, Lord Jesus, yeah, we come back to you, Lord Jesus, you're right there with us, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we come to you today, Lord, asking for a revival, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Running the Christian journey, we get tired, Lord Jesus, but you can revive, yeah. You can regenerate, you can re-encourage. We're praying for recommitment to you, Lord Jesus, yeah. We're praying for a renewed mind, Lord Jesus. Yeah, transformed, yeah. Sacrificing, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus, yeah. For you, the doctor in the, in the hospital room, yeah. You're the lawyer, Lord Jesus. You're everything. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. 
We're asking, Lord, that you, that you show favor on us, Lord Jesus. That you search our hearts, refine our thinking, refine our hearts. We're coming to the place, Lord Jesus, to be better. Yeah. Oh, we need you, Lord. We're, we're begging you for your Holy Spirit to be in this place. Touch the pastor, Lord Jesus, who's given the word. Let it encourage. Let it refine. Let it revive us, Lord Jesus. Help us to get through the week. Help us to get through the day. Yeah, yeah. Keep our eyes focused on you, Lord Jesus, as we run this Christian race. Oh, we love you, Lord Jesus. We lift our hands in total adoration. Oh, for such an awesome God. Oh, hallelujah. Bless us, Lord Jesus. Keep us as only you know how and revive us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord, he took me back a little bit. He was talking about that song, Revive Us. He said, we praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who now. Yeah, I know the song. No? Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Y'all do know the song. Well, God bless you. We truly thank God for you being here with us tonight for this first night of our annual spring revival. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you for pressing your way out this evening to be a part of this worship celebration. And much like Brother Young was saying, we do need revival. Yeah. We, we do need a pickup. Amen. I think sometimes when we come to revival, it's almost like a jump start. You know how it is when your battery die in your car and you got to pull out them jumper cables and, and, and then, you know, you got that other car on the other side that's got all the power. Yeah. Well, think about Jesus as being the one with all the power and he's tapping on to us and now we're getting our jump start. We're getting our revival so that we can continue to move forward in this race that is before us. And I'm so thankful that we've got a, I mean, a stupendous lineup this week. And I would recommend and highly encourage you to be here every night because I believe every night you're going to get a blessing from God. And tonight we're going to start off with someone that I refer to in my head and my heart as a servant. Look at somebody and say servant. He's a servant. Let me tell you why I would say something like that. Number one, he served in the Marine Corps. There you go, RJ. RJ's with me, that's right. He served his country for four years in the Marine Corps. Then he got out of the Marine Corps and he served his community. He was part of the San Diego Police Department. As a result of being a part of the police department, he was also part of their SWAT team. So, I mean, he got eagle eye. Pinpoint accuracy. Amen. And even while there, he served on the police department as a chaplain for two years as well. So he served our country and he served our community. And for the past 14 years, he's been serving as the pastor of the Bright Hope Community Church. He's got servants in his heart. It's, it's who he is. I'm thankful for the fact that he's also my friend and my brother. I thank God that our relationship has been what it's been over the years. And on top of all of those things, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a grandfather, a grandfather of eight, but no great grands yet. Amen. But it just shows how God is using him in so many different ways. And I believe he's going to use him in a very special way to be a blessing to us tonight. So we're going to ask the choir to bless us with one more selection. And then after that, we'll hear from our speaker for the hour in the person of Pastor Brian Barmer, pastor of the Bright Hope Community Church right here in San Diego. Let's give God some praise as they come in that order.
Let the church say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Can I get comfortable? I want to bring greetings on behalf of the Bright Hope Community Church in San Diego. It's just good to be back with the Mesa View family once again. Amen. Thank you for the invitation to come and celebrate with you and to seek the Lord for revival in 2024. It's good to be with my dear friend, Pastor Darrell Perkins, along with his lovely bride, Sister Teresa. God bless you and the Mace of You family. It's good to see you once again. I can recall times when Pastor Perkins would invite me to come and share a word during the youth revivals when you all were over at Wagon High. Amen. I still see some familiar faces. Amen. It's good to see you once again, and I see that there's some youth and children here, and you're a multi-generational, multicultural ministry. Praise God for what God is doing through the Mesa View Church in Poway, California. You know, I don't oftentimes get up this far. I'm going to leave that where it is. But it's good to be with friends once again. I didn't come alone, and I dare not uh, leave this place without mentioning my wife. She's not with me tonight because my granddaughter uh, has the opening night of a play at her school, and she is the lead player. So I said, baby, you go support the babies. Amen. I think I can go home now. But I brought some, some of my men with me. I want to stand up, deacons. It's Deacon Johnson and Deacon Hazard from the Bright Hope Community Church. I want to thank them for coming. And once again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and share with you. Amen. And, and when I got the call from uh, Pastor Perkins, I did not hesitate. To accept it because I know we go a long way back yes, from, from the times we were in uh, conventions together in New Orleans and fellowshipping with one another and serving at the NAF table together and just praying with one another and sitting in conferences here in San Diego. I know that the Mesa View Church has a second to none par excellent pastor yeah. in Doro Perkins. I'm excited. Yes, sir. I'm always excited about preaching the word, but I'm especially excited about what God has laid upon your hearts. Amen. So I just want to share with you. I know, I know some of you have to work tomorrow. Amen. I'm retired. I don't have to go to work. I ain't got nothing to do in the morning. But I won't keep you here all night if you pray. With me from the pews, there'll be power in the pulpit. Amen. Come on, come on. There you go. Amen. I want to address your theme for the year. It's a marvelous theme, and I dare not, dare not leave here without thanking God for, for all that he has done. Amen. 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 Here in this community. And the theme, I think, is very apropos to what's going on, come on somebody, in San Diego. Your theme comes from the book of Hebrews, and I want to invite your attention for those of you who have a Bible. I am a Bible-believing preacher. Bible-believing. Hebrews chapter 12, if you will. And I only want to read two verses for you. I know your theme comes from verse 2, but 
I want to read for you verse 1 as well. And there you'll find these words from the New American Standard Bible. It reads, Therefore, since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let's run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, okay. Verse 2 in your theme, looking only to Jesus, the originator and perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The New King James Version reads slightly differently in verse 2, keeping our eyes on Jesus. The source and perfecter, the King James says, the author and the finisher of our faith. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Father, we thank you now for yet another opportunity to share your word and to hear from heaven. We pray your blessings upon us now, O oh God. We pray your presence and your power. That we would communicate the truth of the gospel that we might be revived in these last and evil days. We need to learn, Heavenly Father, how to lean and depend on you. Speak to our hearts from the depths of your word. Allow us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Yes, yes. Have mercy. Let your will be done. Your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. I would that you would reason with me for a little while on this thought. Keep your eyes on Jesus. On Jesus. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. keep your eyes on Jesus. In March of, of 2018, the Colorado Department of Demography published a report that stated that in terms of economic growth, technical progress, and military triumphs, the greatest generation in American history was that when people were born in 1901 to 1927. Okay. That's, okay. that's our grandparents generation. That's the builder generation. That same report reports that the most productive generation in American history is the baby boomer generation. That's my generation. Those born 1946 to 1964, the baby boomer generation. And the interesting fact about the generational gaps in America is this, that although there are differences in philosophy, come on somebody, uh -huh, uh -huh. differences in ideals from generation to generation, there's one constant among all the generations, and that is, listen to this, the more things change, all right, all right, all right. the more they Stay the same. Yeah. Are y'all praying with me? That's an oxymoron. Oh, come on, come on. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This well-known oxymoronic statement supports what God says in the scriptures. Here's what God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. Listen to this. What has been is, will be. What has been is what will be. What has been done is what will be done. Listen, there is nothing new under the sun. Are y'all listening to me, Generation Z? Are the millennials in the house listening? There is nothing new under 
the Son. If you thought of something new, chances are because God said it in the Word, somebody said it and thought about it before you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generations yeah. ago. Y'all yeah. still with me? And so the writer of the book of Hebrews comes along and he reminds us that we are called to endure the challenges of the Christian race as others have already done. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Are y'all still with me? Yeah, yeah. Why am I saying that? Because if you look at our scripture text for this revival, it starts in chapter 12 with the word, therefore. Y'all still with me? Anytime you see the word therefore, you ought to ask yourself the question, what is it there for? All right. That's all right. That word therefore literally tells us that we have entered in the middle of the conversation. Okay. okay. We, we, we walked into the middle of the movie, All right. and we don't know what's going on, amen, contextually. We need some context to go along with that. Therefore, y'all praying yeah, yeah, with yeah, me? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. And so in order for us to gain some context about tonight's and this week's focal point, uh -huh. keeping your eyes on Jesus, we need some context. All right. So we got to go back to chapter 11. And verse 1, and in chapter 11, verse 1, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's right. That's right. And then he proceeds to give a roll call of the heroes of faith. I, I, know, I know this is a Bible-believing church, so I know you've studied the book of Hebrews before, and I won't waste your time walking through those li that list of names uh -huh, because uh -huh. it's rather lengthy. But what I want to do, what I want to do is at least sh share with you just some bullet points. All right. Hey, that's good. Are y'all praying with that's me? Good. Just some bullet points that help us to understand why it's so very important to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Talks about Abel and how he had faith. Amen. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. Why are you talking about Abel keeping his eyes on Jesus and Jesus wasn't even born? Well, let me tell you this, and that's a great point. Yeah. Let me tell you this. If you go back and you do an independent study of the book of Genesis yourself, you'll find that in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, there are only seven Hebrew words. And in that seven Hebrew words, you'll find the word Elohim. And Elohim literally is the Hebrew word for God, but it's a plural word. The I am ending is what makes it plural. Right. And so if you look at that plural word, Elohim, what you'll find is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Said, let us make man. 126. In our own image and in our own likeness. So it's very appropriate for the writer of Hebrews to include all of the Old Testament saints who did not meet Jesus. They knew who he was because he is God in the flesh. And they put their faith in God. So if we're going to endeavor in this life, in 2024, to live life keeping our eyes on Christ, there are three things that our text will enable us to do in order to be successful. Okay. As a matter of fact, there are three things that the believer must do, must do if we're going to be successful in keeping our eyes on Christ. Look yeah. at your Bible. Yeah. And look at verse 1. Verse 1 literally tells us that we need to do what? Lay aside yeah. every weight and the sin 
which does so easily beset or entangle or ensnare okay. us. All right. All right. Are y'all still with me? With you, man. With you. I want you to notice the figurative language that the writer uses in this verse, and he paints the picture of an athletic competition. Okay. Any athletes in the house? Anybody here used to ever wrestle or play football or basketball or run track or play softball or volleyball? If you were ever involved in any athletic endeavor, you'll understand what the writer of the text is trying to say. He's using athletic language. He's painting the picture of an athletic context. And then the text tells us of something that we must do in order to be successful even in those events. We have to lay aside every weight. I remember when I was running track in college, I know when, when, before my, my event, I'd go out and warm up with my, my sweats on. If you ever ran training track athletes here, if you ever ran track, you would warm up with your track act, uh, uh, warm up suit on. And then when it was time for the, for the race, all right, all right. You, you, you would take off your sweats. Hey, Amen. You take your warm up suit off, brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get ready to run. Well, that's important. Because in the Hebrew and Roman culture, it was customary for those involved in athletics to, complete with, to compete without clothing. My, Lord. My wife and I just came back from Greece in, in, in this past December. We took a, took a trip to Greece and we looked at, went to some of the museums and we saw statues of the athletic statues of the, of the Greek gods okay. that were there. And you'll notice the difference between the, young, the statues of young men and young women. Versus the statutes of old men and older women. Okay. Does that make sense? If, right. you, if you take notice of Greek art, all of the statutes of young men, they're all naked. Okay. All right. Okay. All of the statutes of the older men are all clothed. Okay. All right. Are y'all still with me? The reason is athlete, young men are for battle. Battle. Old men are for counsel. Okay. And that was depicted in the art, and that's what the writer of the book of Hebrews is trying to convey to us. If you're going to run the race for Christ, you have to take off some things. Oh, my. Way inside every way you can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you are. There, there, there's, there's some things you need to share. If you're going to run for Christ, there's some yeah. things you need to take off. Uh -huh. And listen, listen, those things are just weights. They, they don't rise to the level of sin. Come okay. on, somebody. All They're right. just weights. Wait. Are y'all still with Wait. me? Yeah. And, and here's an observation. There are things in life that are weighty and heavy enough to become encumbrances to your spiritual walk. Wow. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. We need to lay those things down. They, they, they don't reach the level of sin, but they weigh us down. They, they, they're, they're not literally habits that become sin. They're things that could become habits. They're unbecoming of Christians in their character. Okay, okay. You know somebody that's just mean-spirited? Yeah. Being mean-spirited is not a sin, but it's just a weight that Ooh, keeps yeah. you from growing closer yeah. Yeah. to the Lord. Okay. If you are mean-spirited... Hey man, how can you obey that, that the, 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 the commandment of God that says you shall love your neighbor as your... Y'all not praying with me. Things like unfriendliness, habitual rudeness, and being ungrateful. If you know someone who's ungrateful, you ought to pray for them. My Lord. Because that is a struggle that they go through, not really realizing how it impacts their spiritual life yeah. and their relationship with other people, yeah, well, but it's not a sin. Come on, man. Revive it. Revive it. They come need on. to lay that stuff down yeah, in order to yeah, grow closer yeah. to Jesus. And you can't grow if you don't have your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Then the text says we need to lay aside every weight and the sin. And so the writer admonishes us to lay those things down that so easily ensnare us. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that's called? That's a habit. habit. And, 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 and come on, somebody. Am I, am I in the church? Church folk can have some bad habits. Well, well. I'm sorry, Mace of you. Bright hope has some bad habits. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You in the house, sir. You in the house. 
those things that easily entangle you. Did you know that pornography in the, within the confines of the church is as high as it has ever been in the whole of human history? It's what's causing leaders in the church to stumble. It's causing leaders in the church to lead people astray. Immorality and sexual sin in the church, don't get quiet on me, wow. is a sin. Wow. Now, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that the writer does not say, pray and ask God to forgive you of these sins. Okay. He literally says, it's up to you to lay aside. Yeah. You need to lay aside. Every way. Why am I saying that? Because this letter to the to the to the to the to the church, right? Uh -huh. Book of Hebrews was written to believers. That's right. Come on, somebody. Right. It was written to those who have a relationship with Christ. And so, if there's something within your character that is that is, that is personally inclined to lead you away from God, whether it's a weakness or even the environment that you in that you're in, yeah. the text says you need to lay it aside. Lay it aside. Let me move on to my, my second point. My second point is that you need to learn to run. Look at your text. It says, let us run with patience. Some Bibles might say endurance. Run, let us run with endurance the race that lies before us. You could put, for that word endurance, you could put the word patience there. And this word in the original language of the text is a powerfully descriptive word. Okay. In, and in English, we get the translation, let us run with patience. But it literally says, run with endurance. Any, everybody ever been on a five or three or two mile run? You know, you, in order for you to complete that run, you're going to need some endurance. endurance. Are y'all still with me? In any, yeah, any athletic competition, yeah. you're going to, in order for you to start and finish, it's okay to start well. Come on, somebody. All right, all right. But you need to learn how to finish yeah. well. Yeah. Are y'all still praying with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We find this same Greek word in Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 12. And we're very familiar with Romans 12 because we always always quote those first two verses, yeah. don't we? Yeah. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. Yeah. But you need to continue on down to verse 12. And in verse 12, Paul tells the church at Rome, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Yeah. Now, I find that yeah. strange yeah. that someone would have to encourage the church Come on. to love one another Come in on. the church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He says, giving honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in Diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. And here it is. Be patient. Listen to this. In tribulation. Yeah. How many of yeah. you know that if you are trusting in God, if you have stepped out on yeah. faith, yeah. if you yeah. put your hope in Jesus, yeah. you're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some. You, 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 you're not going to get out of this life unscathed. Right. Are y'all praying with That's me? Right. How do I know this? The 11th chapter of Hebrews lets me know that believers are going to go through some things. Yeah, you right. you, you, you see, right. they, they were torn in two. Some of them were cut with swords. Some of them were boiled in oil. Some of them were hung on crosses. Yeah. Some of them were tied between two animals yeah. and pulled apart. On, you are on. not going to get out of this life as a believer in Christ without going through some tribulation. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Your, 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 your reputation may be attacked. Are y'all praying with me? Your character, as long as you uphold the blood-stained banner, your character may be attacked. 
but don't, but don't fret. Keep your eye on Jesus. Keep your eye on the prize. Because at the end of the day, yeah, if yeah. they kill you, you win. Well, and if they leave you alone, you win. You win if they kill you because you get to go be with the Lord. Yeah. If they leave you alone, you get to share the gospel and help somebody else. Yeah. Get to heaven. key word in this verse is run. It's written in the aorist tense. Literally, it's a futuristic verb that literally means that, that as you continue, right, as we continue to run, meaning that you are already, you should all, oh, come on, somebody. You should already be running. Anybody here running for the Lord? Just the other day, I watched an episode, uh, a special document, uh, documentary on O.J. Simpson, Life of O.J. Simpson. Okay. Marvelous, marvelous documentary. And one of the things that struck me was, I don't care what happened after he retired, O.J. Simpson was one of the greatest running backs in the history yeah, of the National right. Football League. Yeah, yeah, so true. One of the greatest. And, and I remember as a kid watching him run, I wanted to be like O.J. Mm. Here's, what I, here's what I remember. O.J. was chasing something. He was chasing Jim Brown's record. He had his eye on Jim Brown's record. And so when Adrian Peterson came along, amen, he had his eye on a record. He had his eye on a prize. He had his eye on a goal. He had his eye on reaching something. That's my point. If you're running for the Lord, you ought to have your eye on Jesus. Because Jesus is going to lead you to heaven. Don't worry about your problems. Because life is going to be filled with problems. Don't worry about the distractions. Life is going to be filled with distractions. But listen, I know someone who's greater than the distractions. I know someone who's greater than the problem. As a matter of fact, he solved all our most important problem one night on a cross on Golgotha. Come on now. And here's the thing. We, we, we approach the resurrection of Christ or the crucifixion of Christ in, a, in, a, in something, something of a morbid way. Uh -huh. But if you really research what Christ did, yeah. Christ w w went to that whole process joyfully. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. he went through that gladly. Right, right. He, he went through that thing uh, knowing full well that he was setting all of eternity yeah. right again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why the text says, look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Are y'all praying with me? He's the author because he is the originator and the progenitor of the universe. He's the greatest causer and the greatest mover. He is the unmoved mover. He's able to speak and men live. He's able to speak and men die. Do you know yeah. that the Bible tells us about a day that there was a funeral procession of a little girl and the family was weeping and mourning the loss uh -huh. of a daughter and Jesus happened to stroll by one yeah. day and yeah. stop yeah. the funeral procession and reached out and touched the little girl? Yeah. And you know what yeah. happened? The yeah. Bible said because he is the progenitor of the universe uh -huh. and because he is the one who spoke spinning worlds into existence, yeah. he was able to call her back to the living. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why we don't worry about our problems. I know we got bills. Well, uh huh. I know uh -huh. we have problematic children. Well, well. But that's the least of our concern. Yeah. We ought to pray that our children come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every trend that leads to a triumph has been tutored by the victorious virtue of Christ's perfect life. Mm. Everything that we do reflects the fact that Christ has blessed us and we have a record from generation to generation in Hebrews chapter 11 that lets us know that just as grandmom and granddad taught us about Christ, yeah. amen, we need to teach our children about who Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we don't teach 
the next generation uh -huh. about who Christ is and how to keep their eye on Christ, the world is going to teach them to turn away from Christ. That's right. That's right. I wish I had some part, right. somebody praying with me. Why should we look to Jesus? Because the Bible says that we should keep our eye on him. Uh -huh. He is our savior. That's right. He is our redeemer. He shed his blood yeah. on a cross on Calvary. Calvary. He is the best thing who ever came through our generation. Say that. Say He's that. the best thing that came to my mama's generation. That's right. That's he right. is the best thing that came to my grandmother's generation. Say it. Say it. He died on a cross and was buried in a grave. Yeah. He laid there for three days. Yeah, yeah. And according to the scriptures, yeah. uh, he got up yeah. early, early one morning uh -huh. uh, with all power uh -huh. in the palm of his hand. Yeah. Uh, everything about Jesus causes us to keep our eyes on him. Yeah. I would rather keep my eyes on Jesus yeah. uh, than on our government. My, my, my. I would rather keep my eyes on Jesus than keep my eye on my money. Come on, come I would on. rather keep my eye on Jesus than keep my eye on my family. Well, because well, if I well. keep my eye on Jesus. Yeah. He can control the government. Right, he right, can right. control my money yeah, and yeah. he can control my family. Yeah, yeah. Keep your eyes on Jesus uh, for he is alive forevermore. Yeah. And the promise is that he's coming back one day uh -huh. for the church yeah. without a spot or a wrinkle. Yeah. Those who are called by his name. For the Bible says that, in, that for those there's no other name given among men whereby we, we must, must be saved. saved. Yeah. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sin. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that your son made on the cross that helps us to focus on the truth. Not only the truth, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh -huh. 